All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. Yes, indeed. Here we are. It is time once again for another student of the gun. Oh, man. Drop your phone and fight. We have lessons learned today from, I think it's Flo Rida. Was that Flo Rida? I'm pretty sure it was. Rida. Flo Rida. But uh, maybe it wasn't Flo Rida. Yeah, it was Tampa. It was Tampa. Uh, Florida man. No, Florida woman. We're going to talk about that. Today, we've got a... Uh, We've got a review of the week. We've got a, a heads up if you are a local or if you live uh, in the vicinity of the Salt Lake Valley or whatever. We've got a class coming up. Uh, Duraco Finish Firearm section of the week, Brownells Bullet Point. And, of course, as always, we've got a student in the gun homeroom. Going to talk about being dangerous on demand. All that today on the fun-filled episode soon to be award-winning student of the gun radio welcome to student of the gun radio planting freedom seeds since 2013 here we don't just talk about guns and gear we also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics now sit back relax and allow today's episode to drip ever so gently into your ear please welcome your co-hosts founder of mastermind media and consulting group jared martin and the shipping owner zach martin now, give it up to your beloved host, the Pimp Man of America, Professor Paul Markle. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. If you are on the uh, Discord listening right now, if you've got questions, we've got answers. Go ahead and post them in there. Uh, <clears throat> do we want to wait to talk about the, the Beyond the Boo Boo class? Uh, we can talk about it now. Okay. So there's a uh, we scheduled a Beyond the Boo Boo. Uh, we can't call Band Aid anymore because Johnson and Johnson doesn't want to. Uh, they don't want to play with us. <laughs> and since we're doing advertising, we can't say Band Aid. But it's called Beyond the Boo Boo, uh, and we're actually going to do a truncated, uh, essentially a stop the bleeding uh, program. And uh, the link is at BeyondTheBooBoo.com. Yes, we own that. We own BeyondTheBooBoo.com. And if you go there, you can get all the details. But I will tell you this, Saturday, March 11th, 2023, at the Warriors Warehouse Gym in Vernal, Utah, we're going to be doing the class. And if you are in the neighborhood or in driving distance or whatever uh, and want to get into it, I suggest that you do that. Uh, sooner versus later, because there are a limited number of seats for this class. Uh, this is life-saving training. And uh, what I want you to ask yourself right now is I want you to ask yourself, do you have the ability, the skill, the ability, uh, and the gear to save the life of someone that you love? I'm not talking about strangers or or the burglar you just shot. People say dumb crap like that all the time. I don't not gonna. I don't need that training. I I just shot the bastard. I'm not gonna gonna go fix him. I didn't tell you to do that. What I told you is that the person who you're most likely to use this education to save, the skill to save, is the person you see every day when you wake up. It's the people who ride in the car with you. Next time you're in the car, before you put it in drive, look around. Look at the people in the car and think to yourself, have an honest discussion with yourself and say, if we were driving down the road and some asshat came through a red light and smashed into us and drove this vehicle into the ditch and one of these people was bleeding to death, could I save their life? Yes or no? If you want to, that's great. We can help you do that. Oh, uh, Jared, you were going to say something. I was just looking at the reviews on the page. So this is a truncated version of the full 16-hour class. We decided to do shorter classes so that we could reach more people. And uh, if you think about it, you'll be using the stop the bleeding stuff that's in our our full beyond the band-aid beyond the boo-boo class will be using the stop the bleeding portion of that more often than you would be using the other portions probably. So what we did is we said, okay, which one is, is most likely for people to be using 
we took that and we said, okay, let's make this its own shorter class so that we can arm more people with the knowledge and the gear to save people's lives. And I was just looking at the reviews here and Wesley said, much more prepared now. I have had some first aid training in the past, but this class raised my confidence level and helped me see some areas I need to be better prepared. It was both informative and entertaining, and I would recommend it to anyone who believes in being prepared for an emergency. I thought that that was interesting because, like I just said, we took four hours out of a 16-hour course, and even in that four hours, Wesley said, hey, I've had some training in the past, but this class made me realize that there were some areas that I need to be more prepared in, and it's a quarter of the entire class, but it's still super valuable. So I'm hoping that we've got some people here that are local listening or people that are willing to make the travel to Warriors Warehouse in Vernal, Utah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it's it's interesting to me uh, that uh, as somebody who's been involved in this in this topic or in this this arena for a long time, that we still, even in 2023, after 20 years of GWAT, we still have first aid classes that don't teach this. It's it's nuts. It's nuts. It's coming around though. We've seen a it, lot it of is coming around. Years, but it's like it's always difficult to be the early adopter because you're the one that's there with like a very small group, if any anybody else. Yeah. Right. So, but and I'd have to tip everybody that's listening needs to tip their hat to Professor Paul because <laughs> it's he's one of the guys that was there in the beginning that was saying, "Hey, let's do this," and this is why. Zach and I were there, but we weren't the subject matter experts at that point in time. And so we were like, obviously, we're cheering behind dad because it's the right thing to do. And we believed in the message. But he was spearheading that with him and James Yeager were two of the uh, the gun industry folk that were spearheading the movement of, hey, if we're willing to conceal carry and potentially use this this firearm to take the life of a bad person, then we also need to be carrying medical equipment so that we can heal the li- or heal the bodies and save the lives of the good, good people. Good people, good people can and do bleed all the time. Uh, so, and it's not just gunshots and getting people like, oh, I don't go to bad places where I shouldn't be. I'm like, do you drive in a car? Yeah. The number one cause of accidental death in the United States of America is still automobile accidents. You know, so. Uh, that's enough of that. If, if you don't get it by now, you're never going to get it. All right, we got a review of the week. And somehow the boo-boo got dropped in there. Um, but uh, Jared is going to give us the, the student of the gun review of the week, meaning someone reviewed us, and we're going to uh, acknowledge that person and make them give them their, their 60 seconds of fame. Yeah, this is something that we haven't done enough in the past and I want to start doing every week is making sure that we pick somebody that's left a review and it could be good, it could be bad, could be neutral, just something that sticks out to us from one of the platforms. And this one comes from iTunes. It was PC Mugsy. And the title is part of my weekly podcast lineup. And then PC Mugsy says, as a female who loves firearms, this podcast is always at the top of my listening list. Professor Paul Jared and Zach, obviously, or they put an obvious amount of effort into each podcast. As a new gun owner, you will walk away from each podcast with a piece of knowledge from those with years of experience. Listen, learn, and forever be a student of the gun. I appreciate that. Thank you. So thank you, PC Muggsy. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you much. guys want to hear your review read on the show, it's super easy. All you have to do is leave one. And it can be on any platform. We're on iHeartRadio. We've got iTunes. We've got Spotify. Any place Spot, we're that on all leave a review, then do it. What what is what does Scott call it? And any, any podcatcher. Yeah, podcatcher. Any podcatcher. I was catcher. doing the math the other day, and we have we actively publish to sixteen platforms every single show. That's a lot. Yeah. So if you can't find us, it's your own fault. Yeah. You're like, I found you. I know you did. People are like, well, what, what time does your show come on, Paul? I don't know what time does it's it Monday mornings at 9.30 if you want to listen live. If it's live. Any time of the ever, of the multiverse. Any time of the multiverse. It's it's wanna... now. People, yeah, it's funny. I, I joke because people who I know, like friends and acquaintances, are like, well, what time does your radio show come on? Like, now? Like, what do you mean now? Like, now? 
like right now, you, right now. <laughs> <Do> you, <laughs> and I was talking to another uh, another friend of mine who's in the radio business, and and uh, we were we were discussing how uh, it, it's amazing that still there are people that don't understand that on demand is not just the future; it is now. And if it's you don't, past. <laughs> yeah, it's the past. Uh, if if you don't produce, if your material, your show, whether it's video, audio, whatever, uh, written the written word, you know, Kindle, Kindle is on demand. Written, you know, it's it's the written word on demand. If you want it right now, you can get it. Open your phone, one, two, three, in sixty seconds, you have it. Uh, if if you're if the material you're creating is not available on demand for the consumer. You're wasting your time. You are wasting your time. And there are still people in our industry who don't understand that. (laughs) Uh, They're like, well, yeah, but, uh, you know, such and such a radio show comes on at when? Well, Tuesdays at at 5 o'clock. I would bet you money that the majority of the listeners are listening to their podcast version. Oh yeah, yeah. We we know that. We all we all know that. See, that's the dirty little secret is we all know that even when somebody has a live broadcast radio show, eighty percent of their listenership is the on demand podcast. The only people that listen to radio shows like on you know a timed radio show like Rush used to come on from noon to three Eastern, right? The only people who listen to that are people who are. All like every day are in their car at the same time, or they're at work and they're at their desk in their workstation, and they and they're like, I was told that I could listen to the radio at a reasonable level, and I re- I believe that that the volume is at a reasonable level. Who, who's that? Office Space man. Oh, okay. I was yeah. Like, remember the office name. space. I, I'm going to burn the. That's it. I'm going to burn the building. Oh, down. that's right. The stapler guy. Yeah, that thing. I was. I was told. Anybody know I, his name? I listened. Melvin. No, it wasn't Melvin. Melvin. Was it Melvin? Melvin. Wasn't no. Same with an M. See, yeah, that's why he burned the building it. down because nobody yeah. freaking knew uh, his name. Melvin. I, I, Melvin. Yeah, and no, it's not it. But you, you'll come up with it. The people are screaming right now. The people are screaming at the radio. And I'm going to let you scream. Steven no Root. Milton. Oh, that's the Milton. guy's name in real life. Milton. I don't care about the actor. Not Melvin. It was Milton. Milton. Hey, Mil- Milton, could Milton. you turn that down? I, I, was I, was, I was told that I could listen to the radio at a reasonable level. <laughs> that's been 23 years. 24. That was 1999. Can you believe that? That's crazy. Still is. Remember the subplot was Y2K. Y2K, that's right. The subplot was Y2K. I'm right. I'm fixing code for the Y2K, the year 2000 change. It doesn't matter. It's boring. (laughs) Well, thank goodness that they changed all that code so that the world didn't end at midnight in 1999. Sorry, Prince. All right, uh, moving on. It's time for a Duracode Finish Firearm segment of the week. All right. What? I said I knew it was something with an M. Yeah, yeah, it was Milton. So uh, if you guys pay attention to our socialist media, if you follow us on socialist media, uh, you'll see that this weekend Zach put up a a little shorty, a short clip. Uh, I went out into the snow, and we have plenty of it. Went out into the snow, and I did a winter uh, eval of the R1 of the FNFAL. It's actually the DS Arms SA-58 rifle. Uh, but uh, one of the things I did, if you guys followed the Real Men Wear Shorts video series, and shame on you if you didn't, uh, I took the the original gun and I, I went and I got, I ordered the most authentic Rhodesian baby poop yellow and green kit that I could get. 
I, I got this kit. It had actual liquid paint with actual paint brushes. <laughs> and I recorded a video, uh, and it's out there. It's available. And it's like how to how to paint your 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 FN or your your R one or whatever, um, and what I did was was I, I put it on top of black Duracoat. Now the the original the guns that come from DS Arms are finished in Duracoat. They're Duracoated, uh, and the gun that I got from the factory was. Duracoat finish. It was finished in a slightly darker black, or I don't know if they buy slightly darker black, but it was black, right? So the original gun already had a solid rhinoceros tough finish on it. And then I added the baby poop and jungle green just so that it would look like, well, like one of the original guns from the Rhodesian Bush Wars. Now, I took that gun out into the snow, and, of course, the gun is what well it, it's it's jungle green and baby poop yellow and that kind of stands out in the snow so i thought what the heck i need to make it white just real quick not going to stay like that uh so i grabbed a, a roll of coban white vet wrap it was it was vet wrap it's white uh and i wrapped up the big parts because uh, obviously you can't wrap around the action and stuff like that. Wrapped around the big parts. And a lot of you guys are like, um, okay, cool. This is where I need to caution you. If you're going to do something like that, you need to make sure that the base coating is solid. All right. That it's because if you take let's say the vet wrap or whatever, and you wrap it around the blued steel of a shotgun uh, or the blued steel of a rifle or whatever, this is what's going to happen. The wrap is going to trap moisture against the metal. Or let's say you do like I did and you take it out into the snow uh, and you get snow all over it because that's what happens when you go out into the snow and you bring it back in, now the moisture is trapped against the gun. And here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to break your hearts. If you do not have a good, a very good, Duracoat good, uh, corrosion prevention system on there, you, you know, if you don't have something <laughs> like Duracoat that will keep the metal from rusting, if you put that wrap stuff on it and then you just leave it, it's kind of like, has anybody here, I know old guys have, put a, put a shot, a blued steel shotgun or a blued steel rifle or blued steel anything, put it away in a gun safe or put it away in a gun case, and then you pull it out, and it has the perfect fingerprint, the perfect image of fingerprints in rust on the barrel. Because the, the, the salt from your sweat, from your hands, you touched it, held it, stuck it in the case, left it alone, pulled it out three months later, six months later, whatever, and then there's this perfect handprint in rust on the gun. Well, if you, if you have a blued steel or if you have a steel or a finish that is not rust corrosion uh, preventative, uh, rust resistant, corrosion resistant like Duracoat, and you put the wrap stuff on it, and you leave it there. If you put it on the steel, what will happen? Now, if you look at mine, I just put I put it on the on the hand guards and on the pistol grip and on the stock and stuff like that. Uh, it will, but I know a lot of you guys out there, uh, you might have goose guns or you might have winter guns or whatever, and you you wrap the whole barrel all the way down of the shotgun. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just telling you, you you need to have a solid coating on the gun from the beginning and uh, that gun that it, it, it i don't know if, if zach can put a link if you want to Zach, put a link to the to the uh, the video in the show notes so people if they didn't see it can know what i'm talking about oh uh, but uh, yeah that gun started out with a solid black duracoat finish so i don't have to worry that the steel parts are going to rust because they're not because well, because I know, because <laughs> it's Duracoated and they're not going to rust. That's that's the way it is. 
So there you go. Uh, if, if you want to uh, put like a you know a quick wrap that you can take off and change and into that, and that's great. That's great. You just don't want to trap salt. Uh, you know, the, the sweat from your hands. You don't want to trap that or moisture. You don't want to, don't want to trap the moisture against the steel, uh, unless of course it's dura coated. Then you don't have to worry about it. All right, you got it. You get it. You're good. Okay. All right, a dupa did that dupa deer. Oh, <laughs> oh, I was I was perusing uh, the socialist media, and you know, Jared, that I follow SOE original SOE gear and John oh, Lewis. Yeah. yeah, I follow them, and this morning. John Willis. John Willis has like a little studio, like a little uh, video studio, and he's got the giant SOE uh, symbology. You know, he's got a big plaque sign that says "Original SOE Gear" on the wall uh, in his studio, and then right next to it, it's and he has one that says "High Point Firearms." Or high point, the champagne of guns, or something like that. I'm gonna have to look at it, uh, but it was. Uh, and, and he had he had somebody over, and he, it was like a, a friend come to visit him, and, and the dude's like, "What does that say?" And he said, "Does that say High Point the the champagne of guns?" <laughs> I shared it. I think I shared it. Uh, I know I did. I shared it with uh, with High Point. Yeah, it says High Point Firearms, the champagne of pistols. <laughs> That's I think it is. Yep, this is it, and it's done up like the, uh, uh, like the old, the old Miller beer commercials. So I thought that was cool. I thought that was kind of funny. So I actually did share that. I sent that to, to the guys at High Point so they could get a chuckle out of that. <laughs> and if, if I know them, they're they'll. Laugh. I know that that the whole thing is sarcasm, right? But if I know them, I would claw them onto that, dude. Yeah. I would grab onto that and run with it. <laughs> Gone. I would grab that and run with it. Yes, indeed. Mm. So the the JXP10 has a light rail, but the light is not included. You know how I know that? Because it says it in the description. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they, they put a light rail on it. Uh, and they they put a picture of it with the with a light with a weapon light, but they wanted to remind you that no, they're not going to send you a weapon light. They're not going to send you a streamlight weapon light with the gun. Sorry, you got to get your own. And it is a streamlight TLR one, which we are very very familiar with. We've we've done a lot of work with the TLR one. So there you go, there you go, Heller one. That's right. Tell her one. All right. Juxi, J U X X I. Uh, we talked about the Beretta video. Do we have a newer video this week, Zach, or is that the last recent one? That's the most recent one. That's the we've most got recent the, uh, one. We have one coming soon, though. I saw that we've got the, the Battle Box, I think, 95. Mission 95 is coming out soon. Well, yeah, it, hopefully. It, he's working on it. He's working on it. Yeah. We're catching up. So soon could be. Soon Catch is up. relative, just so you guys know. Catch up. That's right. Everything's relative. That's right. Everything's Life is relative. Right. Yeah, that's right. Catch up. Well, actually, the so latest go, one is Concealed Carrier Stops Texas Small Attacker. That's the latest one. Oh, yeah. That was one of the shows. Yep. That's one of these shows here. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to, uh, if you're interested in seeing what kind of cool stuff is in the Battle Box Mission 95, then pay attention to studentofthegun.com slash juxy. You can go over there, subscribe to the channel. And when the new video is posted, it will send you a notification via email. And just in case you don't get enough of those already and you want more, you can go ahead and do that. <laughs> That's now, right. If you don't want those notifications, you can shut them off so you don't have to get them. But if you want to be notified when that video is there, you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel and you will get a notification for it. That's right. Can I ask the, can I ask the interesting you? thing from my perspective is I know how much snow is where data is right now. And I don't know how many parts of the world or the United States even get that amount of snow. So it's, it's I'm interested to see how much stuff that you're able to use from that box in the snow. 
Well, so now, yeah, some of it is, some of it isn't. Uh, actually, the uh, the next battle box mission that's going to go up on Juxi is going to be ninety four. Ninety four. Okay. Ninety four. Zach's going to put that up next. My so, numbers are messed up. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. So yeah, mission ninety four. Uh, mission ninety four is is uh, vehicle heavy. It's it's a lot of stuff for your truck or your SUV. Not a hundred percent, but a lot of stuff for your truck and your SUV. So there you go. All right, moving on. So if you haven't subscribed to juxxi.com, the student of the gun channel on juxi.com, well, you're wrong. So go do it. Thank you very much. And now listen a little bit louder. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, um, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Follow us, you freaks and you freakettes. Hey, did you guys enjoy? Uh, how many of you guys out there are listeners to the Bill Frady Lock and Load show, radio show? Bill's one of those guys that not only does he have the uh, a radio show that's on the radio, but he also has a, a, a podcast version as well. And if you didn't, well, there you go. You get two two free bonus hours uh, of me. The only problem is you have to sit through commercials. At the top of the hour, the bottom of the hour, the mid-hour. <laughs> That's another thing about doing live radio is the format. Top of the hour, five minutes commercials. And then you talk for, for 12 minutes and then another commercial. And then bottom of the hour. The worst thing, and I told Bill this, I said the worst thing about doing the radio is when I, I get on there and I do a show with somebody that has bottom of the hour news breaks. I don't know if you guys have listened to what passes as, quote, the news uh, on radio here lately, but it's it's pretty pathetic. It's pretty pathetic. Uh, essentially, it is it, the 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 takeaway from every bottom or top of the hour news break is you should be afraid, submit to the government, do what you're told. There you go. That is the that is the summation. Be afraid, submit to the government, do what you're told. Yeah. But uh, we don't believe that here. We believe that you should be bold, fearless. And ungovernable. That is an American. That's what an American is. An American is bold, fearless, and ungovernable. You know who is governable? Slaves and peasants. That's who's governable. Can I debate? Can I debate one of those? Nope. Why not? Which one do you want to debate? I want to debate fearless because I don't think that's the right thing that you're looking for. I think that maybe you mean courageous. Okay, you you wanna you wanna play thesaurus with me? I mean, it, it kind of seems like semantics, but not really because the language is the language, and fearless mm -hmm. is impossible to achieve. But having in in fact, even if you could be fearless, I think that it is it would be better if you could like experience that fear, but also have enough courage to overcome the fear, and no matter if you're afraid or not, still do the thing that needs to be done. Okay, so so how about this? How about sh not showing fear? And if we wanted to simplify yeah, that, yeah, there's a difference there would, between you have, you have more courage and less fear. If we want to just turn that into a compound word, we could just say fearless. Fearless. No, the reason like, I bring that up is because courage is a leadership you. trait. Fearless oh, is not a leadership uh, trait. Oh, uh, there you go. And then, so that kind of dovetails into, and the reason I brought that up is because that dovetails into our, is that the Friday episode or is that the Thursday episode? 
Oh, uh, do we do the, the leadership stuff? Leadership Thursday. Thursday. So we, yeah, leadership yeah we do leadership Thursday. traits every single Thursday. And we, uh, we go over that stuff that we go over leadership and what it means and how to be a leader for both your community and, uh, outside your community as well. We do that on the grad program bonus hour for Thursday. It's the first bonus hour every single week, one out of two. And you can get that at getsotg.com. That's right. All right. Bold, courageous, and ungovernable. All right. But let's move on to our Brownells bullet point segment brought to you by Brownells. All right. We teased you with it last week, and uh, we're all done teasing you. For our Brownells bullet points today, we have a very special guest coming to us from Grinnell, Iowa. Yes, indeed. Uh, it is Mr. Roy Hill. Mr. Roy Hill, how are you today? Oh, very good, and, and thank you all so much for having me on. It's always a pleasure whenever I get to come on and talk with folks I like to hang out with, and absolutely present company included. Mm. Oh, here I'm, I'm the only non-Markle on the show, it looks like. Ah, yes, you are. Yeah, uh, we, we saw each other briefly at, Very briefly. at, at the shot Shooting, Hunting, and Outdoor Trade Show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the show you go to wave to your friends. Right, right. As you as you run from meeting to meeting to meeting, yes, and you're encounter like, your friends, and then oh, hey, good to see you. We'll talk later, and then it never happens. No, we won't. <laughs> no, we won't. Oh, but I, yeah, I I learned that lesson. Uh, I I'll, I'll give you a great example. I ran into Michael Bain on the last day of the show on Friday as he was coming out of the men's room, and I was getting ready to go into the men's room at the Sands, and I stopped him. And we stood there and talked for 20 minutes because I said, I know if we separate, we will not see I'll each other. Never again. see you again. You know, like ships see. parting in the night. Right. That's right. right. Lost, lost in the sea of faces. You, you do that on like Monday and Tuesday. You, you see someone, you're like, oh, hey, man. Well, you know, I'm here all week. You're here all week. Yeah, we'll catch up. No, you won't. No, you won't. No, you won't. You'll never see them yeah. again. No, it's 80,000 people there. You yeah. won't see them. No. <laughs> but then again, there are also those people that everywhere you go, and it's different every year. Every right. year, that like every booth you walk into, you're like, "This is the fourth time I've seen you." And it, right, right. But you don't know. It's it's random. It's like gambling. It's like gambling. It's a roll of the dice. So, but enough enough shot show frivolity. Uh, it, it it has been too long since we were able to sit down and enjoy yes, an adult beverage and a cigar, and and not have to go anywhere. Yeah. How how has uh, has winter in Iowa been cold and nasty for you? We've actually for February we've we've had two nasty episodes, um, and uh, somehow I've managed to be out of the state during both of them. Yeah. And so, so my, my, my teenage son has gotten, just gotten to earn his keep with a snow shovel a little bit, but uh, actually it's surprisingly mild out there. I mean, if, if, I, if it wasn't windy, I wouldn't have needed a jacket coming in this morning. It's going to be in like the, the high forties, low fifties. It's, it's, it's gray and rainy, but it's not frozen. So we've, we've had some nastiness, but it's right now it's surprisingly mild. Hmm. How's Wyoming? Oh, uh, well, they yeah. closed. It, it's closed. You're not allowed yes. to come back tomorrow. Uh, it actually, it, it got to the point where you know what the uh, what do they call them? They call them uh, I don't. They're not turbo, but they in in order to move the snow out of the passes, they mm-hmm. they can't just shove it. It's too much. It's too deep to shove. Right. There's nowhere to shove it. To. So they have these these snow plow apparatus that actually it, it's like imagine your snow blower. You know, with with the blades and stuff. Imagine your snowblower only the size of a large truck, and uh, they've had in order to clear uh, is eighty or seventy. Which it's eighty, right? Yeah, Jared, it's eighty that goes from Salt Lake to. Or is, uh, am I missing? Am I missing? Or is it ninety? Is it I ninety? No, no, it's eighty. In order to clear yeah, yeah. eighty, somebody said seventy earlier. No, in order to clear it, they. The regular plows can't clear it. They right. had to get the super industrial strength blowing snow the the the, the mountain pass snowblowers just to get it open. 
Oh, uh, ooh, I've never seen one of those in real life. Yeah, they're, they're, I've seen pictures. Yeah, it's, it's it's imagine a snowblower only the size of a truck. Oh, uh, so yeah, it's serious. This has been a a. It's this has actually been the winter that people talk about or fear when they talk about moving out west right. or whatever. Like, right. You know, when, when the first year we were in Wyoming. We went through the whole winter and came out of it, and I was like, "That wasn't, right. that, wasn't that bad." Right. I mean, I grew up in Michigan, and I know what snow is. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, but this winter, this is the they've actually, you know, when you come out here, if you've ever been out west, you see like the 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 cross buck um, gates, mm -hmm. but they're not on railroads; they're on the highways. On the, they're on the interstate. Yeah, they're on the roads, yeah. and, and yep. they put those things down. They're like roads closed, folks. Go home. Go home. We're not interstate's closed. The interstate's yep. closed. Yeah, just now, I, I actually lived in Wyoming for two years, but it was over in the eastern, not so pretty part of the state in Gillette. And uh, I've I've seen those. I've seen them shut down the interstate a few times. Oh, yeah. Well, yep. the, the nice thing about Gillette, though, is it's just a hop, skip and a jump to the Black Hills. Right. You yeah. just you get there in an hour. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, the yeah. And that's gorgeous. And you have an endless supply of razor blades. Yeah. Right. Right. Razor blades and coal. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about brown owls. <laughs> sure, let's talk about brown owls. This is a good. This is a good warm up. Uh, so, uh, rather than me, I, I've I've attempted to in, in enlighten my audience, um, but I thought that you could elucidate and tell people what is actually really new and cool and important about this launch that's been in the process for uh, yes, five years. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's been longer than that, but yeah, at least say five, five years. But yeah, <laughs> we'll say five. We'll narrow it down to say at least just 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 for for brevity's sake, just five years. But if you go to brownells.com today, February the twenty seventh, you will see the new Brownells website. In fact, today is what we're calling our. This is our official celebratory launch. We're calling it the grand opening celebration. So we have a brand new website. Uh, we have improved search function. It's got a completely new look. Uh, those of you who especially who like to do things on your phones uh, should be pleased with the new website because this is optimized for use on mobile devices, especially phones, or if you're using an iPad or a tablet or something like that. So for mobile devices, it's, it's, it's really mobile device friendly. To be perfectly honest, when I got hired here a long time ago, we basically had our catalog on the website. I mean, that's what our old website was like. It still had catalog thinking. It still had catalog structure. The way it was organized was still very much catalog. This one's not that way at all. This one is uh, absolutely, hopefully, a modern, up-to-date website that's more user-friendly. So please check that out at brownells.com. Now, to go along with that, to celebrate our um grand opening of our new website. We're doing what we call the Brownells Gun Room Giveaway. Uh, in fact, a press release just went out on that this morning earlier. But if you go to uh, brownells.com forward slash contest, or just go to brownells.com and, and look for the banner, the Brownells Gun Room Giveaway, is we're basically, we're giving away a gun room. Now you've got to supply the actual room, but we're <laughs> giving you uh, $12,000 of stuff to fill up that room. There's guns, there's optics, there's a Hornady uh, safe, uh, there's Brownells gun cases for each gun, there's ammo, magazines, gunsmithing tools, cleaning supplies, you name it, it's in there. It's $12,000 retail value. Some of the sponsors involved with products include Sig Sauer, Colt, Remington, Hornady, Law Tactical, Magpul, Real Avid, uh, Carlson's Choke Tubes, Otis, Hoppies, Winchester, Slip 2000, Fix It Sticks, Wheeler Engineering, and Grace USA. And between now and March 5th, you can sign up for your chance as part of our grand opening celebration to win yourself a brand new $12,000 gun room. So it, as long as you come up with the physical space, we will have guns, ammo, safe, you name it, stuff for the guns, gun cases, magazines to fill that gun room up. And some lucky person is going to win this. It's a heck of a yes. prize package. That's cray cray. So you essentially you guys have to log in with either your email, socialist media, Insta garbage, all that stuff. SoundCloud. Right. I see SoundCloud is one of the things there. Right, right. We have you can get uh, up to looks like I'm looking at the page right now. 
You can subscribe to the newsletter and you get a certain amount of entries per check out the new brown and then you know, there's a ways to unlock it says 4265 more entries with logging in in all sorts of ways of course you know because we're brown elves and we have all sorts of cool stuff to buy you want to follow us anyway because you want to know when stuff goes on sale and, and, and is live also we've got a little green banner across the top of the page uh, as part of our grand opening, free shipping on orders of 199 bucks or more with the code SITE SHIP, S I T E SHIP. So, if, even if you don't want to enter the, the, the grand opening, if you want to buy something for 200 bucks and get free shipping, uh, you use the code SITE SHIP, and that will also run throughout our grand opening celebration until March 5th. There you I go. I like that promo code, the SITE SHIP promo code, because I'm a digital geek. And that means that they ship the site, and now it's they live. ship the site. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, and the other thing that we want to make sure that we touch on: it's not just brownells.com is not just an e-commerce site. It's also a place where people who uh, right. love guns and are pro two A and pro freedom can go to watch videos and get information uh, and get help because sometimes. Things can right. apart and don't go back together. And so... Uh, <laughs> right, right. And if right, and if you look at our navigation bar on the on, on the new website, all the way over to the right, it's called Trigger Times. Mm -hmm. For those who, who maybe uh, used the feature on the old website, we called it the Learn section. But we're, we're instead of just a collection of instructions or, or, or old web bench articles or something, Trigger Times... The ultimate vision for it is going to be our basically our content site. You're going to be able to access videos, read articles, et cetera. But the example, if you go to Trigger Times and click on it, you can go down to how to build an AR-15. And we have an entire video series that you can't get on YouTube because YouTube doesn't allow stuff like this. But right. we walk folks through step by step. The lower, the upper, the barrel, triggers, you name it, lower parts kit, how to step-by-step -step build your very own AR-15 uh, with easy-to-search, to easy-to-find format. You can pause the video wherever they're broken down into chapters. And be looking for a lot more stuff like that in trigger times in the future. We've got rifle builds, handgun builds. Uh, we also have... Uh, Things that show up other places on our social media. Smith Busters is a popular video series with Caleb uh, and Steve-O. I want to talk about Caleb here in just a second. Uh, From the Vault, We the People, Company Spotlight. So we're going to have a whole lot. We already have some stuff on here, but we're going to be having a whole lot more on Trigger Times. And that's on purpose and deliberate. It is our uh, sort of Second Amendment lifestyle blog and content site. Yeah, that, and that, you know, as we mentioned, uh, I mentioned previously, the, the time to support alternative platforms is now. Uh, and, you know, right. I, I'm sure, Roy, you, you probably heard the rumblings at SHOT about people who were complaining that, that uh, for instance, Silencer Shop had their entire, their entire video series shut down because they right. were showing people how to assemble guns and how you can't do that is... Like, what do you mean you can't do that? You can't. Uh, right. We, we've got oh, yeah. to. We've got to. Uh, and, and we've got to eventually, find other ways to get the message out. Well, yes, eventually, absolutely. they're just going to, they're just going to, sh you know, they, they do it a little bit at a time. It's kind of like the death mm -hmm. by arsenic poisoning, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't really notice it until you're dead. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's, that that's ar arsenic poisoning. It's like you don't really notice it, you know, until you're dead, and then you notice. Uh, but the you know the the places like Jukesy dot com and and so forth, and and you can keep your videos on YouTube until they pull them down, and then what are you going to do then? You got to have something else, right? Right, and and I know some content creators are doing things like uh, distributing through Rumble and other their other sources. Eventually, they'll they'll have to something will have to happen where there's a an actual free speech, uh, first and second amendment friendly space where this stuff can go up. And I I also heard from several content creators there were people who had their channels suspended in some cases outright canceled. Some have gotten them back. Some have gotten them back minus certain types of content, and it's just really a mixed bag. But it's a constant, it's a constant struggle. It's a constant major league, at the very least, major league annoyance. So many people on on our side, if you will, have to deal with is 
well, what do you, what do you mean? I can't show in myself inserting a standard capacity magazine anymore. That's just nuts. But that's, that's one of the new things that's happened. Yeah. yeah. It, it's crazy. The, the good news is that a, a free speech site already exists. Juicy.com. One of their slogans is one of our slogans. Cause I'm part of it is the, uh, that one, a protects two, a, cause everybody knows that two, a protects all the other amendments. But we, we don't often consider that the First Amendment and the freedom of speech, the freedom of assembly actually protects the other ones as well. Right, right. They're all, they're all, they all depend together. And, and what's that? It, can you spell that out for me again? Is it Juxi? Yeah, J U X X I dot com. X X I. Okay, all right. Juxi. In fact, I'm learning about that right now. So I'll go check this out. Cool. All yeah. right. Oh, yeah. Well, and what's important First one I, yep. about uh, Juxi? is that unlike most of the alternative sites still rely on either YouTube slash, well, YouTube slash Google uh, to host. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if they decide, well, we don't like your content, we don't want it there, they just whoosh, make it go away. We don't want to host it. Yeah. And, and so if, if you're, it doesn't yep. matter what the name of your website is, if, you're, if your videos are hosted there, poof, they're gone. Uh, so that, you know, that, and that has been, yep. that's been the, the problem that we've been dealing with for, for years now. So you're like, well, I'll just, I'll just make my own website with blackjack and hookers. Um, and, and yeah, you, you, you can do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it's, it's not that easy. You know, there's a big no. difference between making a homepage for your dog and, right. and creating right. a site that's going to house like a gazillion mega billion watts of right of right video and that's that's searchable and easy to use and and can handle m hundreds of millions if not a billions of users all at once oh, right yeah. that's 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 a whole other level of technological achievement sure. there and yep. what, what we've done to the to the end user is is we've we've spoiled them see the end right. user is now spoiled if they if they click on something and it doesn't upload and start playing in five seconds, they're gone. Yep, yep, yep. We, I'll I was, just go back to this other stuff. I was yep. joking. Who who are we with? I can't remember. I was, we were joking the other day about. Uh, oh, I was at the at the AT and T phone store getting a phone upgrade, and and the woman who was helping us out was about our age. She was in her late forties, maybe. So we were talking about how when YouTube first came out, if someone sent you a YouTube video link. You'd hit start, and then you'd go find other stuff to do. Right while as, it was a, loading. <laughs> right, right on the on the twenty eight point eight K K KBS or whatever dial up yeah. modem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, you'd come back in fifteen minutes, and you could watch the thirty second video. Uh, right, dude. So, in that amount of time, you could have went and got some Chinese food. <laughs> That's right. right. Yeah, fifteen minutes, you could have got Chinese food. Oh, uh, but yeah. So the the end user. And that's, I mean, of course, that's when you do something well, you make it look easy. Mm -hmm. And so the end user just assumes they're like, oh, how hard can it possibly be? I mean, it's 2023. Just you just hire some button and make it happen. Hire some right. geeks and make them do a website. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. But you, like you said, it's, it's, and this reminds me, okay, I'm a word geek on you. My favorite Italian word of all time is sprezzatura. Sprezzatura, which is the art of performing a difficult task so gracefully it looks effortless. So you have to have, with great power comes great responsibility and great technological ability. So to have, have your website and your video server, you have to have sprezzatura. That's right. It's just, it just is. Yes. It just is. Yeah. It just, you got to, you got to make it, you got to make it look effortless. And seamless. <laughs> yep. Oh man. Is there anything else you want to say about the site before we get too far off into the into the uh, into the weeds no uh, please if 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 you're if, if you find something you like please let us know if you're having issues please let us know uh the site has been live since about february 15th uh, we did a, a, a i guess the technical term is soft launch we sh shifted over to it and really didn't make a, a big uh, noise about it because we wanted to see you know was everything working what was going to break yeah, what was going to break? <laughs> what were the problems we didn't even know were problems yet? Uh, and and it's an ongoing process. It's a, even though we're we're doing our official grand opening, and now we're making a bunch of noise about it. Uh, please, if if there's any issues that, that you're out there and you're a customer, and you you uh, 
encounter that, please holler at us and let us know because uh, that'll help us be able to track it down and fix it. Hopefully it's going well. Uh, the search function, I've been playing around with the search function. The search function to me seems a lot better and a lot, uh, a lot. Uh, it, it's more productive. It yields better results. And uh, I really hope that folks like the new website and it really helps your Brownell shopping experience be a much better experience. There you go. Now I just used the search function and I searched for Roy Hill action figure and nothing <laughs> popped up. I am so disappointed. All right. Well, we don't have one of those. Uh, yeah. We don't have one of those. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who to talk to, but yeah, we, we, we make it. Who of was that it that, funny. that did a limited, a, a limited edition action figure set? Was it Gunsight? Do you remember that? Oh, somebody, somebody in our business. I know Durko did it. I know that. Yeah, Durko, Durko did it. Now, instead of the Roy Hill, instead of the Roy Hill action figure set, the, the one we need is like the Caleb Savant, the the Baron action figure. That yeah. would sell. There you go. Because <laughs> <laughs> I suppose uh, if if we send enough people to search for terms, the yeah. people, the, the <laughs> IT department's gonna be like, hey, this is a popular term. We should this probably pop- like we should, we should make this product. Up. They're going to call you. Yeah. They're going to call but, uh, you. But Indian. Caleb. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, this weekend out at, at the Gundy's, Caleb actually won most dapper content. Ah, so, there you go. I mean, he's got some of the best hair in the business. I he, mean, I'm, I'm sure yeah. you've seen pictures. I mean, it's, it's impressive. And he's, he was actually voted 2023 most dapper influencer at the Gundy. So you know, there you go. Yeah. I mean, I'd buy a Caleb. The Baron Savant action figure. There you go. Oh yeah, it's cool. His, his hard part is strong. Oh, dude, <laughs> dude, you could <laughs> on point. You can you can cut small pieces of paper on that. Are you kidding me? Uh, <laughs> you see, and you can enjoy and experience all of this stuff on the brand new Brownells website. It, it's it's still Brownells dot com, like it always was. Cool. Only it's yep. a better experience than than you've had in a long time. There you go. <laughs> thank you thank you and, and we hope that continues well ladies and you can gentlemen, also sign up for your chance to win a twelve thousand dollar gun room go that's ahead, right yeah. no twelve thousand dollar gun room go there right now if you're not there well uh-huh. you're listening to us so when you're when you're not listening to us of course if you can multitask you could probably do that yeah I, I believe if you're listening to if you're using itunes and you're listening you can actually open other you can open other stuff your, your phone is smart enough Roy Roy's old enough to remember single window. Remember Windows three point one. Well, actually, I remember things like the Sears and Roebuck catalog and the paper. Yeah. You know, shipped, <laughs> flipped, oh, flipped, yeah. Kids today don't know what it was like to have Windows three point one, where you could only have one window open at a time. Right. At if, a time. If you wanted to go somewhere else, of course, there weren't nearly as many websites back then. No. So, like, where do no. you want to go? This It's AOL.com uh, or CompuServe. That, that's what I have a serve. philosophical question. Are you ready for it? <laughs> Send it. Why did they call it Windows if you could only have one window? Mm. I don't know. It's for the, the same that. reason that you park in your driveway. You don't drive that's in right, your parkway? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They you drive them, on uh, a parkway the commercials you, they call them trailers but they play them before the videos right yeah. right yeah it shouldn't be a so preview. if you guys haven't heard a roy hill pontificate about historical facts before uh, oh my he's gosh. one of the gentlemen that i really enjoy listening to when we get him on a historical kick because he can just rattle off facts and he's an educator in a previous life so right i'm good at I'm a refugee that. from higher education, right? Yeah. <laughs> I had to flee. <laughs> Before they put you in the camp. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, that's all right. All right. Thank you very much to our good friend Roy Hill for joining us today. And uh, you guys have got your assignment. Get your butts over to brownells.com right now. We've got one question for Roy, if you have some time, Roy. Yeah, hit me, hit me. Yeah, Nathan just said, can Roy confirm the free complimentary coffee when we visit Brownells, the free complimentary you broke up there. What was the free complimentary? The free complimentary coffee. Yes, so, yes, we do SOTG have cup of Joe. Yes, yes, we have uh, coffee machines in the lobby and spread throughout the building. You can even do things like uh, choose between cafe au lait, espresso. A, there's even a white. Uh, I mean, a, 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 a 
hot chocolate. There's a hot chocolate option even. So, yes, absolutely, we can hook you up. Look at that. There you go. Well, Fantastic. Tell them Good that the gun sent you, and they'll uh, hook you up with a, a free complimentary cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. All right. I hope you guys enjoy that. I hope you guys take advantage of that. I hope you guys get your butts over there uh, to uh, Brown Owls and check them out. Check them out. All right. What's what's next? What is next in the... Uh, Dax got something to say. Dax got something to say. Shop SOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. Shop SOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. So, uh, Zach, I see you just got a, a task assignment. Are you going to be able to do that? Uh, it'd be better if one of you guys just, just reinforced it. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, okay. Then. You didn't see my thing. Check the comments. Yep. So uh, if you go to beyondtheboo.com, sure. if you go to beyondtheboo.com right now, as you're listening to me, and you want to sign up for the class that's at the Warrior Warehouse uh, on March 11th, that's Saturday, March 11th, 2023, if you put in the promo code 1178, that's this show, that's this episode, 1178, if you put in the promo code 1178, you're going to get a, we're going to give you a 10% discount just for doing that. How's that sound? It's because you're a listener of Student of the Gun Radio. That's right. We appreciate you. We want you to save some money. Make it worth your time. So that's pretty cool. So go to beyondtheboo.com. You can remember that. Sign up. Enter the discount 1178-1178. And that's the promo code. And you'll get a discount. There you go. That's that's pretty righteous. I think that's righteous of us. All right. We're going to move on. And this is the... We're going to dive deep into this next topic and zach as you saw there are audio clips in these stories that we're going to have to reinforce them but it's time for a student of the gun homeroom brought to you by crossbreedholsters.com All right, what are we always talking about on Crossbreed Holsters Homeroom? On the homeroom, what's what is the theme? Being dangerous on demand. Being dangerous on demand because you don't know when you're going to have to be dangerous. You don't know. It's like, you know, why do you wear your seatbelt? Do you wear your seatbelt because you're a reckless driver? No, I wear my seatbelt because I don't know at what point in time I'm just going to be minding my own business and some a-hole is going to slam into me. I don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, I have a fire extinguisher in my kitchen because I don't know, right? I have a first aid kit. I have a trauma kit because I don't know. When I walk out of my front door, I don't know what's going to happen. I think I know what's going to happen, but I don't know for sure what's going to happen. Same thing hap- Same thing when you leave your house and you go to the gym or you go from your apartment to the apartment building's gym or your condo complex. You go from your condo to the condo complex's gym. What is going to happen there? And this is when most people say, oh, come on, man. What do you think's going to happen? I'm not paranoid like you. I'm just going to go from my house to the gym, have my workout, go back to my house and shower. I don't need to carry all the stuff that you think I should carry. Okay, cool, cool. Or you might want to think about actually being dangerous on demand. And uh, we've got a story here. This did you guys, Did either one of you watch this video yet? I have not, not yet. watched any videos about this yet. I've seen it a bunch of places. Okay. I like to, um, one thing I want to dig into a little bit before we play the video is what dad's saying about carrying no matter where you go. Part of that is creating a habit, right? By to create a habit, you must do that thing consistently. 
when you don't do it consistently, then you're breaking the, uh, breaking the process of creating that habit. And that is an issue. So if you want to be dangerous on demand, then you need to pick what makes you dangerous on demand. And what we say here at student of the gun is carrying the fundamental four lethal, sharp, bright, and medical. Mm -hmm. So to be dangerous on demand, you must consistently carry lethal, sharp, bright, and medical. There are many ways to do that in whatever uh, outfit or clothing that you're wearing for both men and women. It's like the glory days are right now for concealed carry. Back in the day, you know, I've been listening to dad stories for a long time about having to deal with the hot spots from the holsters. I've never had to deal with that because I was comfortable. You know, his generation fixed that problem Crappy for my bells. generation, which I really appreciate. So there's, and it's doing uh, the generations that came before us a disservice if we don't actively use the solutions that they came up for us. Jared, you don't know this, but there was there was a time in my life when carrying a buck buck knives model 110 or not model 112 was the standard uh and and a buck a buck 110 or probably weighs i don't know six ounces maybe eight ounces they're heavy and thick if you wanted to carry a knife the all, like it. The, all the time it was it was heavy it was a burden uh, so that's why we wore belt holsters and so on and so forth. The Spyderco deserves a tremendous amount of credit. They are the ones who pioneered the lightweight, one-hand opening clip knife, the the pocket clip knife. Now everybody everybody followed them after that. Uh, you Was know it the Delica. Was that the the yep, first big the, one? The Delica and and the Endura. The Endura and the Delica were the first. Oh, yeah polymer framed clip knives that you could that were super lightweight super crazy sharp and you could open with one hand people today just assume that that's always been the case it wasn't brothers and sisters uh so the 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 gear that you can carry you know everyone's like uh instagram hashtag edc but that that stuff wasn't round uh and you know there there are ways to you know to carry we we talked about the go bag or the always bag or the or the possibles bag or whatever you know years and years ago remember we had that story about a good friend of mine who was running late for work or late for school and they were they were running late had to get the kid to school they're like crap 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 grab your stuff come on hurry up get in you know and on the way to school in traffic a dude pulled a knife on him and, he's and, like, and this dude that we're talking about here was a dedicated savage. Yeah. He was, he was he's not a, just like a sometimes carrier. He's like a dedicated savage. But they were in a hurry. He was in gym shorts and a t-shirt because they were in Texas. It was hot. It was warm, you know. Gym shirt, shorts, a t-shirt, grabbed his keys and his phone and ran out the door. And after that, I said, what'd you do? He said, I, I got a bag and I put all the stuff in it and I staged the bag so that if I need to run out the door, I can grab the bag, run out the door, and I'll have all those things that I need with me. Fortunately, you know, it turned out okay. He didn't get stabbed or anything, but you just don't know. So we're going to talk, you know, like all this leads back to our story about, well, I can't be armed when I'm in the gym. Why? Why can't you? Because well, I can't. Yes, you can. Uh, how many? T how many of you guys go to public gyms? How many of you in a public gym have seen people that have a bag, a gym bag that they move from station to station with them, and it has their towel and has their water and it has their, you know, if you're a lifter, you got your wraps in there. You got your deadlifting straps, you got your wrist wraps, you've got your, if you've got your micro plates and all that stuff, all the, you know, your workout belt and so forth. I have one and it just so happens that in my bag, there's a lifting belt and there's all that other stuff that I previously mentioned. And there's also a GAT and there's also other stuff in there. So, um, you know, my dearly departed friend Jaeger, when he started going to a public gym, he just, he wore cargo shorts. He, he's like, yeah, I work out in cargo shorts because I've got a J frame in a, in a pocket holster in the front pocket. So when I'm at whatever station I'm standing at, 
He goes, Ape, you're like, yo, you were in cargo shorts. Ha, ha, funny, Grandpa. Ha, ha, yeah, funny. He's like, but there's always a gun within reach within three seconds. What did Cooper say? If you can't reach your gun within three seconds, you've missed the point of the exercise. You've missed the point of the exercise. All right, this story comes to us from February 17th, 2023, uh, kmbc.com, uh, wherever that is, and it's apparently a CNN affiliate. Uh, there's a video that goes along with it. You want to do the video first, or you want to do the lead-in first, Jared? I think we should do the video if Zach's ready. All right. If the surveillance video shows a 24-year-old woman fighting off her attacker inside a gym at a Tampa apartment complex. She is thrown to the ground but does not give up. The moment I would try to call 911, he would try to grab my arm or he was grabbing me. And I was like, okay, at this moment, I can't call 911. So I got to fight this out for the moment. Nashali Alma says she was exercising alone last month around 930 at night inside the gym at the Oaks of Woodland Park Apartments when she let the suspect in the gym. She says sometimes people forget their key fobs, so she didn't think twice. Alma is a bodybuilder and figured if she kept fighting, her attacker would get tired and give up. That was my you know, thought the entire time because the more fight you put in, I do believe they would get more tired because they see that, dang, this girl is fighting, you know, and you can see at the end of the video, he was tired. <laughs> After struggling with him for more than a minute, she is able to break free. I was overwhelmed with emotion of how proud I was that this victim wasn't going to allow herself to be raped and how hard she fought and the strength she had. According to a criminal report affidavit, the next day, the suspect, Xavier Thomas Jones, knocked on another woman's apartment door, asking if she wanted to hang out because he thought she was pretty. Deputies say he entered her apartment, but the victim's fiancé chased him away. After that encounter, deputies located and arrested Thomas Jones. You have no idea who I am. You have clearly been watching me from the outside of my apartment, and you just decided to come out and, and knock on my door. You know, it was just, it was weird. It was really weird, really scary and weird at the same time. That's what we call red flag. Glad yeah. she listened to that. Yeah. What's, Who the hell decided they want to pick on a girl with a face tattoo? Um, <laughs> so, but the scary thing, the, the messed up thing about this is that there's so many things. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am very proud of this woman for fighting. All right. And in addition to that, I have to say this. In the name of all that is holy, if you if how did we get people into this mindset where they're so they're so attached to this that in the middle of being uh, attacked, a rapist is attacking them, they're trying to 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 dial 911. This is what I'm going to tell you. As you're being attacked, you're not going to have the cognitive or tactile abilities to touch 911 on your phone, okay? Did you know Drop that? the phone and fight. Those of you that aren't aware of this, if you at least with an iPhone, iPhone did this and I actually know of a guy i don't know him personally but there's a guy in our industry that was able to uh, he had a severed carotid and he was able to call 911 and let them know that he was on the way to the hospital and basically with an iphone you just take it and you squeeze the buttons on the outside it's like five or six times or whatever and it comes up with an emergency call and it'll call 911 for you I'm not saying to do that instead of fight i'm just letting you know that if you have an iphone then that is an option yeah and if somebody with a severed carotid can do it, then it's probably doable by most people. Yeah, but not in the middle of a fight. Like, yeah. l- listen, drop your phone and use it to fight. like use it as a force multiplier or, or, or yeah, something. Or, or what you she know, was doing, if you noticed, she was whacking him yeah. in the face with the, with the I bomb. watched the whole video. See, they just showed us little segments. I watched the whole video, and throughout the video, every time she breaks for your pushes him, she goes back to her phone, and she's trying to dial. Every I'm time to call she, reinforcement. yeah, every time she she gets she you know that she breaks free from his grasp, she goes back to her phone and she's focusing on the phone. Ladies, ladies, please, please, for the love of all that is holy. 
if you're ever attacked, stop, don't look at your phone. You know, we did a, a an, an entire a video, a very quick video series um, that... Uh, what, what, what's, the, that. what's the name of it? You, you force guys, Options, How to Defend Yourself yeah, Without a Weapon. Yeah, Force Options, How to Defend Yourself Without a Weapon. Uh, and this is back when I talked about martial arts are for personal development. We take martial arts so that we can develop ourselves, right? Martial arts are not for self-defense. You're like, what? Blasphemy! Calm the F down. Because uh, I can teach in one day... I can teach you the physical movements that you need to defend yourself against an unwarranted attack. Yeah, I can do that in one day. Now, you'll have to practice those until they become natural, but I can teach you that in one day. Martial arts are about de- personal development. Okay. You're, uh, th- then there's a, there's a difference there. You don't have to take you know, um, cardio kickboxing to learn to defend yourself. But the fact, if we want to take a second to break down this, the, what would the psychological reason be that sh- instead of continuing to fight, she would be trying to call somebody else to come help? She's going back to her phone because that's what, that's what we can. Well, I know, but can, why would she do that? It's she mental condition. She no, it, well, maybe, but also she would do that because she doesn't feel confident in her ability to finish the fight. And so that's where training and practice come in before the thing happens if you have the confidence in the ability to take care of the problem yourself, then you don't have to rely upon an outside third party to come help you. It might be nice for them to come help after, after you've taken care of the situation, take care of the immediate problem. Right. But yeah. you don't need them to be there to take care of the immediate problem. And and I wanted to address that because it's very important to make sure that you have the knowledge and the skill prior to the event happening and that sounds super obvious but we as humans for whatever reason we wait until the thing happens and it affects us to then say oh man i need to go do this thing and get this training well why don't you get the training because it's it's available nowadays it's not as difficult to get the training and the knowledge and the skill as it was before whether you're talking about the skills that are developed through martial arts or the skills that are developed through firearms training or the skills that are de- developed through the Beyond the Boo Boo um, medical training course, that kind of stuff. Those things are all available and easily accessible nowadays. Yeah. So essentially what I'm saying is our excuses are gone. It's no, just they, up to us now to make the decision that it's important enough to get it now versus later. The you know, If you guys go to, uh, you know, and it sounds like actually I wasn't planning on pimping the Force Options DVD uh, that we did. But you, you've got to, and I'm like I said, I'm glad this turned out well. But it almost didn't see because here's the thing: this rapist got away. The rapist got away, and he wasn't captured until he tried to rape somebody else. All right, this guy is a monster. This guy is a rapist, and he so he attacked this woman in the gym, got away. And then the next day, went to some other woman's apartment, knocked the door. She opens the door. He comes in. Fortunately, she has a fiancé boyfriend or whatever there. And he's like, whoa, what the hell is going on here, buddy? And he, you know, throws him out or whatever. And then police finally catch him. But what if the second case, what if the, there wouldn't have been a boyfriend, fiancé, whatever there? I can tell you what would have happened is this woman probably would have gotten raped. Uh these monsters are out there, and you don't get to decide whether the monsters are there. You only get to decide what you're going to do about it if you encounter one of them. And of course, the you know the people are screaming at the uh, you know they're screaming at the radio, and they're like, "Talk about her letting him in! Talk about her letting him in!" Yeah. So we have the other thing here: people want to be nice. People want to be nice. And monsters and evil people take advantage of your desire to want to be nice. They take advantage of that. This guy is a rapist monster. He goes, knocks on the door, and she's like, well, lots of times people forget their key fobs, so 
I wanted to be nice. She wanted to be the nice person, right? So what does she do? She opens the door and she lets him in. And how do you, I don't know how you deal with that. I mean, how do you, you know, because people don't want to be seen as the mean person, right? And the criminals and the monsters, that's how Ted Bundy was able to get, the, the serial killer Ted Bundy played on the that. Oh, um, that's how serial killers work. That's how rapists work. That's how psychopaths work. They play on your desire to be the nice person, and then they then they use it against you. But uh, the the second one here. So the the very first one. Uh, I don't know if if there's a lot more. Uh, from the second story, it says woman who fought off Jim attacked her breaks her silence. I don't know how long she was silent for, but I thought maybe if it's a short video that we could we could learn something from it. I don't know. What do you think? You know, yeah, yeah let's let's go ahead and play it. Because one of the things that I think that we should discuss is it's easy to uh, Monday morning quarterback this stuff when you're not actually there. And you see it all over the internet, people that don't have any expertise mm-hmm. in defense or anything like that talking about well that she should have done this and she should have done that or they should have done this and they should have done that and whatever and it's it's easy to do that with hindsight being 2020 right so let's let's go go ahead and let her talk and see what she says Why just be one of those videos where it doesn't have any dialogue? So oh, just going up with the thing. So, okay, here we go. Whenever he was at the door, I buzzed him in and he came inside. My thought process was it was just another dude coming in to work out. So I didn't mind, I didn't think of anything out of that. Okay. If you're listening the video approached me i pushed him i said bro what the f are you doing get away from me stop trying to touch me and he started chasing me around the bench and we ended up on the other side of the gym okay i'm grateful that she came forward I'm, i know that her story is going to be an inspiration to other women eventually give up my advice would be to never give up Um, my parents always told me in life to never give up on anything and that's one thing i always kept in my mind when i was fighting him as as long as you don't give up you fight back you show him that you are strong that you are one that you're able to fight back and survive this and get out of the situation i believe it's possible fantastic thank you for that it was pretty pretty much everything that we already knew so what they did was they they took uh, 20 seconds of audio and stretched it out into a minute and a half. So, yeah. Yeah. So if you, but if you watch that, you know, she's got her phone and, and she's like, bro, get away from me. And then she pulls it out and she, she focuses on her phone. And then, you know, she, she gets, you know, she's on the ground and she breaks, breaks away and they get separation and she turns and she looks at her, she looks at her phone. This is what I'm going to tell you ladies out there, and men too, you know. In a situation like that, you need to, oh, this isn't the grad program. You need to destroy the person who's attacking you. You need to destroy their ability to continue attacking you. And then once you've done that, you get on your phone and make all the calls you want. But you need to focus. You need to focus on that. Oh, and something to, something to think about in this specific scenario, which again I know Monday morning quarterback or whatever, but uh, a two pound dumbbell could do a lot of damage. They don't have two pound dumbbells. But if she got away and said, "What? This is a no. This I, I guarantee you, this is one of those uh, public gyms that that doesn't have free weights in it. Be, well, maybe it does. I don't know. Uh, no, they had kettlebells on the wall. Oh, did they but have kettlebells? Those are those can be used as weapons. That's Jared. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It. <laughs> I remember that. Mm. But yeah, no. Every gym in the world has those little two, three, five pound rubber coated dumbbells. Mm. 
Oh, and that's true. Just for like that's true. A blood flow to your wrist. And I mean, it's still a piece of metal or concrete. Oh no! If if you that, grabbed a one of those little rubber coated two pound dumbbells and and cracked a Joker in the face with it, yeah, they would they would remember that. Oh. Uh, so instead of running for her phone and then hitting it with the phone, she could have grabbed one of those little things yeah. and then just. And, and I'm I'm very happy for this woman that she's unharmed. And I'm very happy she'll be mentally unharmed because she fought back. Yeah. When you fight back, you you come through it mentally better than if you submit. See the scumbag, and it's funny, Jared. The exact same people on the news media that are lauding this woman, they're applauding her. As, as being a brave, super brave hero, they're the same scumbags that'll say, you don't need to carry a gun. That's why we have the police. That's why the police are here. Not, it's, it's not your responsibility. And if, and, and if, you're ever, if you ever find yourself in that situation, just do what you're told. How many times have we, have we had that ad nauseum? From the, how many of you work at a place where they have an official what happens in a robbery thing? Well, if if somebody comes in to rob you, just just cooperate and be a good witness and and do what they say. And that's when you raise your hand. And you're like, well, what if what they want is to rape me? Should I just cooperate and be a good witness? Well. Well, I guess it's okay to fight back then after. No, you need to start fight back now at the beginning. It, it Not wait. And, and we've already talked about this ad nauseum, but there might be new people. If you allow yourself to be taken to a secondary crime scene, you are going to die. Somebody comes in and says, stick them up. And then they say, go into the back room, into the kitchen, into the walk-in freezer, into the garage, into the whatever. They're taking you there to kill you, just so you know. If they were just going to grab the money and run, they'd have already done it. If they hang out and they're like, okay, everybody into the back room, you better figure out, you better grab forks, knives, whatever. Of course, if you're just, if you just carry your freaking gun, you just skin that Roscoe out and do God's work. But, um, yeah. Like, well, what is this woman supposed to do? Is she supposed to carry a gun? Yes. Yes. You know, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fr- fan of women in J-frames, but, you know, she's a strong girl. She could probably handle one. Uh, I, there, there's lots of stuff you could do. But uh, tell you what, do you guys want to do a... Uh, oh, do you want to do a special? Because people are listening right now. Do you yeah. want a, a force option special? Sure. All right. Because we Same love code eleven seventy eight. That's right. We love you that? guys. Uh, if you go to the uh, uh, Zach's going to put the the product into the or I can do it. I don't care. I mean, I'm gonna. I'm I gonna, already did it. All right. Yeah. So click the click the uh, product link in the show notes. It'll take you straight directly to. Uh, the Force Options video, uh, use the promo code 1178, and you'll save some money. How's that sound? Uh, is is live in-person training always a good thing? Absolutely it is. But this, you watch this, it'll give you something to think about. Uh, it'll give you something to think about. Uh, yeah, this, this it'll should give you things. If- if you're a, a dad, yeah, give you things to teach your kids. Yep, and uh, you can even have your kids watch it too with you. But if you're and if you are not experienced with anything uh, like how to defend yourself without a weapon, then you'll learn a lot in the video as well. And I know it's hard for men to admit that they may not be experienced with that stuff, but the reality is statistically the uh, that most men do not know how to do that, and the only way to learn how to do that is to consume the educational material and then also practice so That's training right. and practice are those two things that you need to do the, the primary thing that i wanted it to do with that video is to cut through the clutter you see and that that is another that's another danger zone that's why why do people fail to perform under stress there's two reasons 
One reason that people fail to perform under stress is because they have no pre-existing skill. They open the cupboard, cupboard's empty, right? They go to the emergency cupboard, they open it up, they're like, what should I do? Nothing. The other reason that people fail to perform under stress is because they have too much. There's a mental confusion. And then they say, oh, they, they start thinking, what, what thing should I do? When I was at, in the gym two years ago, that guy showed us 18 different things to do, right? That guy showed us all these things. And I nodded my head, and we played, and we did all the things. Now it's two years later. I don't know what to do. So yeah. instead of doing... You're standing there thinking. You're thinking, what should I do instead of doing? Uh, it, the same exact thing goes with you know firearms and clearing stoppages and so forth. If you teach someone three different ways to clear a stoppage, they'll get a stoppage, and instead of immediately fixing it, they'll pause, they'll freeze, they'll go into vapor lock, and they'll start thinking, which one of those things that I, they taught me should I do now? I've seen it over and over and over again. So I experienced this. So if you look at uh, my older, my original, like the first and second MMA fight that I did, you can see, at least I can see, I don't know if you can see it from the outside and not being me, but when I watch the videos, I can see the portions where in the earlier fights, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm in there, we got my hands up and I see an opening and you can see it like the thought process go on and then I react. Well, it's already too late. And thankfully the other person was an amateur at that point too, because professional would have just beat me down and destroyed me. But then in the later fights, I noticed myself and, and I could feel it while I was in there too, rather than thinking and it would just pop up. There would be an opening and then my fist would be there. And I was like, Whoa, I didn't even have to think about that. It I didn't just, even have like, to tell myself it's like, Waka! yeah, it's like, how holy cow. Like the, the one where I kicked the dude in the face and he stood there and looked at me. That was one of those experiences where I was like, wow, how did my foot get there? And then I like, after I was amazed that my foot made it that high, I was like, wow, he's still standing there. Why, why are you still standing there, bro? Yeah. yeah. Did, did you see so the, it, the image that those... I shared with you this morning? It's funny. No, you didn't. Oh, okay. Oh, text message. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the picture of me. Yeah, the that's that was what ten years ago. Yeah, that was a long time. At ago. least that was at least ten years ago. Whew, man, yeah, crazy. So my point with bringing that up is, the more you train and the more you do the thing, the less you're going to have to think about it. And if you find yourself in a position where you're thinking, it's already too late, and the other person has already begun to act to whatever it is that you're doing. O O D A. Oh, uh, it's, it's like when you do 10,000 draw strokes and then you need your gun and all of a sudden the gun's out in front of you pointing at the bad person. You're like, wow. Yeah. How'd that get there? Yeah. I got, the, I got the mental impulse that I need to have a gun in my hand and oh, there it is in my hand. And the, it's crazy. And the most amazing thing to me is that because when your adrenaline dumps, try, time travels so slowly, but it's still that thing happens so fast, even with the slowness. That it, you didn't see it happening, and you did it. It's just so weird. So the the moral of the story here, the the biggest takeaway from this is, you know, and you know, as Zach said, you because you got to be really careful. You don't, you don't want to be the jerk. You don't want to be the Monday morning quarterback, and that is true. But there's also a reason why the FAA investigates every plane crash, every plane that falls out of the sky or runs into something that it wasn't supposed to run into gets investigated. And you say, well, they're a bunch of jerks. What are they going to do? Unring the bell? The plane's already crashed. Why are you spending all this time going through the wreckage? Because what they're doing is they're trying to figure out what went wrong so that that doesn't happen again. What they're doing is they're trying to figure out how they can prevent whatever made that plane fall out of the sky from happening another time. They're trying to take that and learn from it. And that's what we're doing here. We see this situation. Okay, what I want is I want you to make the mental commitment 
to not let that happen to you. Or if you find yourself in a position, and what did uh, Ed Morales, when Ed Morales, he had that epiphany, that epiphanous moment after he survived and was the hero of the FBI Miami shootout, and he became an instructor, and he started teaching other people, and he said, you need to change your mindset. All of you out here are like, well, if I ever have, if I'm ever in a gunfight, or if I'm ever in a fight, or if I ever have to, then this is what I'll do. He said, wrong. That is the wrong mindset to have. What you need to have is you need to change your mindset to when I am in a gunfight, this is what I'm going to do. Because if you tell yourself when, that is the mental inspiration, that is the motivation to do the right things. Because if we, if we tell ourselves if, we give ourselves an out. If you say if, you give your brain, your lazy human brain, an excuse that's when you say, well, uh, you know, I've, I've gone here a hundred times and I never had a problem. I've driven this road, uh, police officers, I've made 200 traffic stops and never once got attacked. Guess what? 201, the 202nd one, 201st one, guy's going to jump out with a pistol and try and kill you. Yep, you put it into the universe. You put it in the universe. When you say, I've never had to, well, it's it's like what did Jared say about an hour ago, 45 minutes ago, the habit, developing the habit. When you say to yourself, you look at your dresser, you're getting dressed, you look at your dresser, and there's your flashlight, your knife, your medical kit, your pistol, whatever, it's all, it's in your dump tray or whatever. And you're like, oh, I'm just going to run to the store. I'm just going to run to the gym. I'm just going to run to the whatever. I've been to the gym 50 times, and I've never had a problem. I'm probably not going to have a problem today. I'm not going to take that with me. That is the day you're going to need it, whether it's the med kit, whether it's whatever. Take it with you. If It literally takes 20 seconds to make the decision nothing. to do it. Yeah, It yeah. costs you nothing, zero dollars, and 20 seconds of your time. To do the right thing. Potentially save your life. Yeah. You know, we, we so often we don't do the right thing, even though the right thing costs us nothing. All it costs you is the, the mental commitment to do the right thing. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to inspire yeah. you to always do the right thing. And, and uh, on our fighting fitness in Thursday's episode this week, we're going to be talking about waiting for motivation versus developing discipline. So they're two different things and they're actually very different things. And that's a topic that we want to discuss for you and help you understand the difference um, and also give you some action steps as well. So go to get SOTG.com, join the grad program and join us for the fighting fitness segment of Episode 1178, Part 2. Yep. And uh, a quick reminder, uh, we do have a brand new Student of the Gun University podcast. Remember, University podcast is short form, single topic, easy to digest. Short form, single topic, easy to digest. And this coming week, uh, it's going to be Embrace Difficult Training. We're going to talk about the difficult training and whether discomfort or difficulty is worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All of you, thank you for being here. We truly appreciate it. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to remind you that if you'd like to be here with us on Thursday and Friday, and we'd love for you to be here on Thursday and Friday, go to get SOTG.com, sign up, follow the instructions and uh, you'll be able to join us. But until then, until we're together again, remember, you're a beginner once, you're a student for life. Thanks for staying until the end. Want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today? Head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like, rating, or review. It makes a big difference. Have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. A delightful human will get back to you faster than you can finish a one-box workout. 
Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. And remember, you are a beginner once, a student for life.